there are these major stellar events coming up this year, not just the total eclipse here in America in just two weeks, but there's another light show you may not have heard about. For the first time in 80 years, a star system located 3,000 light years from Earth will be visible to the human eye. Yeah, it's expected to happen at some point between now and September. It's being called a once in a lifetime event. The researchers here feel that they're within reach of finding new particles that really make the universe tick. One more heave, they say, and they could make one of the biggest breakthroughs of all time. Palab Ghosh, BBC News, CERN. Talk about more fun, guys, for the sky watchers at home. A lot to look forward to in the spring. We're going to see the total solar eclipse yep, on April yeah, 8th. Yeah, it's exciting. But there's a comet that's already close enough to Earth. We're going to see it leave a trail in the night sky. Yeah, astronomers have been watching the Devil Comet, that's what they call it, all month because of a series of flare-ups. But a direct flyby is set to happen somewhere between April 21st and 24th. NASA says they think we could even see this comet with the naked eye during next month's eclipse. Uh, the reason it's called a Devil Comet you guys may have remembered this last year is because the trail of gas and ice that it left behind during a flare up last year actually looked like devil horns. It split yeah. and so it caused these two devil horns. You can kind of see it there. This yes. particular comet only comes into full view once every 71 years. It is a once in a lifetime yeah. event. For those less scientific, we found at least one person who has an uneasy feeling about the rare alignment and how it'll somehow impact his daily life. It kind of disrupts things that are normally taking their course. <laughs> oh my gosh, Frederick, I am so looking forward to this. So we're located in New York City, by the way. I'm curious, will this be visible when this occurs? Will this be visible across the world or is it only going to be in particular locations on Earth? If it uh, goes off between now and and uh, <clears throat> September, October, it will be visible, <clears throat> excuse me, everywhere. Um, it's the Nova will get up to about second magnitude. Uh, that's about the 50th brightest star in the sky. It's the same as uh, Polaris. If you can see Polaris from New York City, uh, you can see this Nova. Uh, it'll be easy to see if you get out to a, a dark place. Uh, it will be bright for a few days. It will get up to, to as I said, second magnitude and then fade. Uh, in a dark place, you can probably see it for a week or two, uh, especially if you have binoculars. Now, the Large Hadron Collider is the world's biggest atom smasher, but as it turns out, it's not big enough. The European Centre for Particle Research, CERN, is unveiling details of a new particle accelerator today, something three times larger and twice as deep. There are so many outstanding questions in fundamental physics today, and in our knowledge of the universe, its structure and its evolution, for which we have no answer. And so we need more powerful instruments to be able to addressing uh, those questions. Thousands of scientists here are hunting for the tiny particles that are contained in the atoms that make up the world around us. Professor Mitesh Patel has spent his entire professional life searching for them. I think for me this is really about exploration. To be able to look for something genuinely new, if you're going to go and explore the unknown, then of course you don't know what you're going to find and you can't guarantee a particular outcome. I can offer you one additional perspective that um, you know many people may or may not know about. There's also a, uh, a Christian perspective about CERN and Switzerland and CERN is actually mm -hmm. built, if I'm not mistaken, on an ancient town named Apollyon, which just so happens to be a portal where a demon will come out of in the last days, which oh. is which lines up very much <laughs> with what CERN are doing. So, uh, interesting. I thought, uh, what is the name of the the place? What is the name? Apollyon. 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 Yes. Apollyon. Uh -huh. Yes. This enormous underground lab lies hidden away beneath the Swiss French Alps. The plan is to stretch it even further. Nearly every day, I still get that sort of wow as I look at all of it. This experiment has been going on for more than a decade. It's made some important discoveries, such as a particle called the Higgs boson. This is one of the detectors that discovered the Higgs 12 years ago. It was an incredible scientific achievement. But the LHC was built to do much more than that. It was supposed to discover brand new particles that would change the theory of physics. It hasn't. 
So in that sense, it's failed. And that's why they need a larger machine. The plan is to build what's called the FCC, the Future Circular Collider, next to the existing accelerator. It'll be at least twice as deep and measure nearly 91 kilometers. That's around 56 miles. Inside, particles will travel much further than they currently do. They're pulsed by an electric field and stronger magnets, which make the particles collide with much greater force and hopefully revealing far more. But it is more than that because there are lots of physicians, I know some, they're doing very strange experimentation. There are beings from portals coming in and out. It's physicists from the CERN who told me this. They've testified so is, to beings coming in and out of portals. Yes. What and and they were beings? saying, I mean, I, I met them at a dinner and, and there were two of them. And uh, both said that, yes, they have, you know, uh, secondhand uh, proof that the people who, who uh, you know, they're, they're dealing with the boson of X and the um, subatomic uh, things. So they have apparently in the bottom of the stern uh, this this portal, this door where they are dealing with all the subatomic uh, dimensions. They say there are 17 different dimensions of reality. That's what the, those physicists say. Some others say there are more dimensions. You know, we know the uh, time space, uh, you know, the tri dimensional. Uh, X, Y, Z in, in, in a graphic. But um, then you have more dimensions and uh, they are playing with that. They're using that. And they have, were a group and they had a, a being. They did not tell me more who came that doesn't resemble a human. And then they had another one and they have a proof because they left a scarf. <laughs> they left a scarf. And now... When you look at what is going on in the Syrian, there is a fight from some of the military um, agencies, uh, Intel. They say that there is a, a fight on time. They're trying to change time. You're going to so much effort digging all these tunnels, spending so much money to smash particles together. Mm -hmm. And so what's the point? Um, scientific exploration. I think it's almost like asking, you know, what's the point of art or music. I think humans have this curiosity of finding what's out there and what is, how does the world around you work? And FCC will help us answer some of those questions. The countdown is on to a once in a lifetime total eclipse. The total eclipse takes place on April 8th. At 3.20 p.m. our world will plunge into the eerie, mysterious, wonderful darkness that is totality. We are in fact the only planet where that has a moon just the right size to block out the sun. But also a few other planets are gonna be visible during this time. A few that we're obviously used to seeing. So once that becomes complete totality, it becomes darkness, you're gonna have Venus, which again, we see a decent amount of times, Jupiter as well. This is 12P, which is the Pons Brooks Comet. It comes around every 71 years. Now, the reason that you might be able to see this with the naked eye versus just a telescope is because this comet is known for flare-ups. Oh. It's basically a ball of dirt and ice. So chunks of it routinely break off mm -hmm. and it causes a much brighter flare as it's traveling across the night sky. It actually, because of the way it's shaped right now, it looks like it has devil horns because of the way chunks have broken off. So it's nicknamed the Millennium Falcon. Ah. And so if we're lucky enough to get clear sky the eclipse and one of those chunks breaking off, you might get to see that comet as well. With 13 states across the country in the path of totality. According to NASA, the Great North American Eclipse will stretch from Mexico to Canada and last anywhere from three and a half to four minutes. When the corona comes out and it goes total, it's like this eyeball looking at you from space because the sun, instead of being bright, is dark and it has this white halo around it and it's like somebody's eye looking down at you. We're going to be live on TV here on Four ABC. Four minutes and on long, so you'll get the, the totality. The whole spiritual, oh, yeah. spiritual experience. experience. I'm looking forward to it. Whole... If you miss it this time around, the next full solar eclipse in the U.S. from coast to coast won't happen until 2045. It's a real visceral experience and the whole anticipation. The first stage of the new collider won't be fully operational until 2045. Why Let's is Geneva... Much more than 
why why is Geneva of such significance? Because you've got the the World Health Organization, all these meetings in Geneva. You've got um, CERN in Geneva, Davos, Switzerland. You've, why is Geneva so significant? Yeah, I would say Switzerland is very significant in general, but uh, because of our neutrality, uh, th there could be many factors. I, so I could take it at different uh, at different levels. So geopolitically, uh, the fact that Switzerland is a nice country of peasants, uh, former mercenaries, uh, historically, and and they're they're nice. They look. I mean, they're compliant and neutral normally. That's one, but actually the other one is the banking system, you know, secret banking system still to this day. They can put all the money they want. Uh, the immunity is another one geopolitically. As a scientist open, you do hypothesis because that's how you build uh, an open reality because otherwise you, you don't, you miss the point. It makes sense because they're all here. So it's the World Economic Forum is just opposite the UN. The UN is, you know, 10 minutes by car uh, to the CERN. Um, then you have all the sports <laughs> association, FIFA, UFA also at 10 um, minutes, half an hour from everything. Yes. So, and, and then we have the Bank of Settlements in Basel. That's two hours and a half away by car. But it's all there. Small Switzerland is like the Disneyland of everything they want to do. Fascinating. So, yeah. We're close to everything.